so we can see that it's um, moving around a little bit here. Let's jump in into our table right now. Let's close this, jump into Spark. And we have our idle Spark tables. We've set our values in here at 20. And we can see that it's approximately 20 here at idle. And it's trimming them a little bit. That's gonna be the effect of our over and under speed tables here. They're doing a good job. I don't need to change any of that. But this is going to be something that you have to keep in the back of your mind. If we start to increase the values here, and we're gonna be finding that's gonna produce more torque at idle, that's going to make the idle speed go up which is going to force the base idle airflow request or the mount down. We don't need as much air bypassing our throttle plate to allow the engine to run. So we're gonna have a seesaw effect. If we bump our base idle spark table here for the, for the, uh, for the mount up, let's say to 30, that would make me have to jump in and we'd see that immediately our desired airflow here, the airflow we need is gonna bump down maybe another 10 pound per hour then we'd have to go in and update our base airflow table. So right now, I'm happy with how it's idling. Um, my target here, I set it 750. We're approximately 750. We can see it's um, pretty much almost nailed down there. And we're finding that our idle spark here is making minimal adjustments. If we have a really big cam, and you're finding that you have your desired idle airflow here really high, 100 or 120 or even higher when it's warm, then chances are you're gonna have to jump back into your idle spark table here and increase the values. You might have to go from 20 to 30, and then you'll find that your base idle airflow will come down a bit, and you'll have to kind of sort that out before you start making, to your, making changes to your base idle airflow table, because again, it's gonna have a seesaw effect. If you increase here, you're gonna decrease in the base idle airflow. If you uh, go in and lower the values down here, you're gonna have to decrease the base idle airflow. So it'll be a balancing act. I'm happy with where it's at, and we don't have to make any radical changes because this is a relatively mild cam. Go ahead and close this. Let's jump back in here. So we are almost here at warm up temperature, 162. I just want to get let it get up to about 170 and then we'll go shut it off and we'll upload those changes. Now here at 162, we can see it's 80 pound per hour. We can see the accumulation from our short and our long-term idle trims. It's gonna be here adding 10. So if we look 70 base of airflow from our table, plus the accumulation here, making uh, minus three plus 13 is 10, is getting us our value here of 80 pound per hour. So let's jump back in here. Let's go back into our idle. Let's go back to our base idle airflow. And taking a look here, uh, we've updated it here to 78. Let's make it a value of 80, click equals. And then here at 176, I'm gonna be anticipating this is probably gonna be something like 78 or 80. It's gonna need more, and then we'll wait till we get up to the hotter temperatures here. We can just do a quick interpolation, just add a little bit more. So chances are we'll need some more base airflow on the hotter temps, but we'll wait to see what it's gonna do. Because as it gets warmer and warmer, we need less and less base idle airflow here, typically, and we'll find it has an ascending trend in the table. Okay. So we're almost here, we're at 169. What I'll do here, I'm gonna stop. We can see right where we're operating at in our table, in our VE table, Let's go make our changes. It's showing it's about 15% off. We need to take out 15% fuel. Let's just make those changes to our idle table. We'll close this, airflow, primary, 